All righty, all right, all right, all right. It is August 8th, Tuesday, August 8th, 2023, and we're back at it. I'm back here accidentally playing the audio in the background. Now I got to mute that. Okay, now that's taken care of. I'm back streaming. It's been a while. It's been about, about two and a half, three weeks since the last stream, which occurred at five in the morning because... Because everyone, we hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I can't believe it. Thank you, everyone who helped me reach that goal and for being a part of the community. And we do these live streams from time to time because it's a way to grow the community. We're not just throwing videos out there and, um, and hoping people are watching it. We're gathering together as a community. Or maybe it's just me talking into a camera and no one's watching it. One of those two things is going on right now. I'm not sure. If anyone's there, let me know in the chat. Uh, let me make sure I get the chat up here. Hey, someone said, hey, uh, Solomon's there. Shri Shriash, welcome to the stream. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you for hanging out with us. I'm gonna just say hello to make sure that's working. Uh, Doot Machine, welcome on Twitch. By the way, if you're not watching on Twitch, I'm gonna put that into that link into the chat so you guys can join us there because that's the best way to join. We're gonna be doing some polls and we're gonna be doing some stuff like that where you can only vote on Twitch. So, um. There we go. Let me put this in the chat. So how have you guys been? What's new? What's been happening the last few weeks? Um, Rakesh says, love your content. Thank you so much for watching. Gabriel said, hola amigos. Welcome. Hello, friend. Hello, sir, says Gre Greta. Greta. All right. We're going to do some coding or we're going to do something involving data, analytics, machine learning, you name it. Large language models. Uh, what other buzzwords can we throw in there? We're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do blockchain integration with your brain right now. So get ready for it. It's gonna be a fun night. And before we get further on with it, let's uh, let's ask everyone in in the chat what how they're feeling and what you guys want to do next. Because I honestly have absolutely nothing planned nothing planned for this stream other than we're gonna hang out okay so give me your ideas in the chat if you're there if you're on twitch if you're on youtube what what do you want to see what do you guys want to see oh by the way we're i'm about to hit do you think we could hit 5k on twitch followers today right now i'm at 4,900 47 maybe we could hit 5000 today that would be a fun little um achievement unlocking the achievements that's what we're doing here okay so here's some ideas i have what we've done on the stream and it's been a while since we've done it is we we a lot of times try to find new and interesting data sets where we can do analysis on them and where we can test them out so that's like a main thing thing that we've done from day one on this channel and we could continue doing tonight if that's what you want to see we could also um explore some open source libraries out there specifically ones made for python that's what we tend to do or the third thing is we can look at some Kaggle competitions that are out there i'm involved in one right now pretty closely that i won't discuss because it's close to the deadline but if i pull up kaggle here if you're not familiar with what this site is is it's a competitive data science website where they host competitions you also put data sets up there uh, i'm not affiliated with them in any way other than i've spent a lot of my life on this website because i find it very fun um so they they launch these competitions, which we could uh, try to form a machine learning solution to. So those are your three options. Let's go to the Twitch 
and make a survey. Let's make a survey. 60 second ad roll. No, we're not going to do that. Hang in there. New poll. What should we work on tonight? Number one will be create data set and analysis. That would be numero uno. Numero dos is um, open source Python and trace, tray, tray, trace would be a uh, Kaggle competition. So uh, I'm gonna let this go for a duration of five minutes, no additional votes. Let's go ahead and start that poll. Let's view the results. Let's view the results as they're coming in. Now, if you don't know how to vote on this and you're watching on something like YouTube, go ahead, go over to Twitch. I put the link in this chat, but I'll put it there again so you know where to find me. Where the crap is the chat? Where did it go? Where did it go? It went here. It went here. Someone already, oh, Data Burst. Data Burst is asking for Kaggle competitions, yet he or she has not voted on Kaggle competition. Oh, wait, OBS Studio is not responding? That is a bad sign. <laughs> I hope I hope the OBS doesn't uh, break. So go to twitch.com slash medallion stallion underscore. I know, I know it's a mouthful. It's a lot to type. That's why I put that link there. Number four, all of them. MMD, thank you for chiming in, as always. Are you about to go to bed? Because that's what you usually say. You going to stay up for us tonight? Stable Diffusion XL Local. Oof. That sounds interesting. It also sounds like something that we couldn't do in one quick-ish stream. I, I'm imagining... The XL in Stable Diffusion means that you'd have to download a bunch of gigabytes of model weights. We could try it. <coughs> Not sure how it would turn out. Man, no one wants to see a Kaggle competition. That has one vote. Um, data set and data analysis. While that's going on, just let me know in chat, like what's going up? I thought it meant extra large. Yeah, extra large. Data Bas Basic says I'm alive. Yes, I am. I took a month off. I took a few weeks off. Um, we we hit a goal. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but sometimes when you've been working towards a goal for a while and then you hit it, then you feel like a little bit, like, am I going to keep pushing at this or should I just take a little break? And I was feeling like maybe I want to take a little break. Also, July's kind of crazy. There's a lot going on in my family and just summer stuff, you know? So we're going to get back into it. Summer's coming to a close. And this fall, I have a lot of things planned. One of which is going to be the next Pog Champs. By the way, let's talk about Pog Champs. There's the Pog Champs that chess.com's hosts. That's probably more, more popular than my pog champs but we've hosted kaggle competitions where you you yes you you out there can join and be on the leaderboard and attempt to solve problems like we do we've had three pog champ series i even forget what they were the first one was um pog champs one pog champs two uh that was Music genre data. Oh, someone else made this. Uh, that was music genre classification. We also did predict my sleep patterns. That was the most recent one. Uh, Greta's saying you want a Kaggle competition. So we're going to have to make a new uh, Pog Champs number five coming up here soon. What should we do? What data set could we use for that that we could form a competition? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Oh no, my uh, alt text broke. And those prizes that we gave away for those were pretty cool. Give away some um, GPUs to the top winners. I mailed out two GPUs 
and I know it got to one of the people. The second person, we had a little bit of an issue, but I think it we've resolved that and it's getting to them through customs. So yeah, that's what's going on. Okay, so what are the votes saying? A data set and analysis, I like this. I like this. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna do some data set analysis if nothing changes in about 30 seconds. Um, so I might as well get ready. So here's the deal. I usually go into this repository directory and then I go into Twitch stream projects. And then if I look here, I number these and we've gone all the way up to number 64, which was LLM cloud. And I'm going to make a 65, which is going to be data set. But wait, what, what data set are we going to create? What are we going to, what are we going to do? What are we going to get? Um, what's been trending locally lo recently? Um, I noticed that I don't think we want to do this, but I noticed that Reddit place occurred again. <coughs> Reddit place, if you aren't familiar with, is a like a open canvas where people could write whatever they wanted. And there's a data set with all the different points that were placed. This occurred a few weeks ago. I don't know if we want to go through all of that, but we did we did some pretty fun analysis with that not too long ago, last year. I guess it was a while ago. <coughs> all right, let's see what the chat says. So that's an option. I don't necessarily want to do that if you guys aren't feeling it. Yellow where the world fights against France bots. Yeah, I think that one thing we tried to do last year was identify where the bots were. And there were some pretty clear um, indicators of when bots were placing points versus a real user. Cause you could see each dot that was placed by a bot. And then you could see the locations where they tended to place. But the main thing that sh that we could see in the data that was fairly obvious as to it being a bot was the time in between when they placed because they would go for like eight hours straight placing dots. For data set analysis, there is a library I saw this morning might be fun to explore. Samir, what is that library? Don't leave me hanging. Hi, Rob. Congratulations on you 100K again. Quick question. Do you have any data engineer certifications you recommend? Does it still matter today in your field? I'd say if you're going to do any sort of certification, make sure it's something that you're enjoying learning about as you're doing it. I wouldn't do it just to get that cert certification. But if you're actually learning something that you want to get better at, then go for it. So then it kind of depends on what you're looking to do. Um, and I don't necessarily know where the best, where the best ones are, but what Samir, where's this data set you were talking? I have a leagues of legends, Python software. It predicts where the stuff shows off. That's cool. I don't play league of legends. Um, maybe we can get some, maybe we can get some, inspiration by what's trending right now um, on Kaggle house prices. So we did, we already did the Zillow house price index. And you actually, I think we have that updating on Kaggle monthly. Zomato restaurants data set, FIFA world cup data set, ransomware attacks, Google stock. Is that just one stock price? World airports. Sent the link. It's called M Mido. Oh, did you send me it? Where did you send it? 
You sent the link? Maida, one of the coolest Python libraries you have ever seen. Is this, are you promoting, are you promoting this? You should give it a th shot. Oh, this is cool. So it's like a, making your Python into a spreadsheet. Let's see. Let's see how many GitHub stars this has. Mito sheet. 1.8K stars. Yeah, we could try this out. We need to find a data set though. I've seen this GitHub repo before, awesome public data sets. How often do they update this though? Two weeks ago, the readme was updated. Let's do a diff on this readme. Let's see what was changed most recently. Do a blame on it. All right, so anything that's really dark on this will indicate that has changed more recently. Two months ago, tuned it, data mining, machine learning, data sets, algorithms, and challenges. I don't know. Harvard Atlas of Econ Economic Complexity, a database for people to explore trade flows. Wait, that sounds amazing. And that's only three weeks ago. Let's look at this data set. Let's look at that. So I'm going to go back a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna check this out. An Atlas of Econ Economic Complexity. The Atlas of Economic Complexity is a powerful data visualization tool that allows people to explore global trade flow across markets, track these dynamics over, the, the, over time and discover new growth opportunities for every country. I want the raw data though. Data sets. International trade data. This could be cool. July 2018, so it's very up to date. From the Growth Lab at Harvard University. Why 2019? Access data set, zip. Okay, 12 gigabytes. It's public domain, and I'm gonna have to put this stuff in. It's kind of large though. All right, so I'm downloading this data I think it's sending me to it. Yes. One download in progress. The Harvard Dataverse. This is going to be interesting. All right. So I'm going to go ahead here and we're going to make a directory called Harvard Dataverse. All right. So I'm also going to activate my Kaggle 2023 Conda environment, and I'm going to start up Jupyter Lab. Sure, we could open up VS Code here, but we're just going to do some exploration in Jupyter Lab. So let's load this bad boy up, this hot puppy. Go into Harvard Dataverse. And now while this is downloading, it's about 400 megabytes in of 16 gigs. They didn't split it up, it looked like. So it also looks like we can just 
select specific data sets. Okay, so let's let's get an understanding of what's going on in this data set. Here, I'll turn the dark theme on for you guys. Uh, here's a data dictionary, which will be very helpful. We'll select that. Let's just go ahead and download this. Oh, I got to fill this out each time. Let's make sure we have a good one then. Country partner SITC product four digit year. That one's downloading. And that's 241 megabytes. While that's downloading, let's also get this. So we understand the data. Is it bad that I'm doing this? If you're gonna make me type that out every time I download something, then I, I guess I could log in. It's kind of on me. It's kind of my issue. Uh, what are you guys saying? I got paid to do it. I have a League of Legends sent the links. Hey Rob, I like your vid video very much. How much make a video about fine tuning Llama 2? I need to I need to make one of those. I will. Uh, someone said data.grob. You can get the 2023. Can't stay for long, but channel is freaking W. Thank you, Moonquake. You might not be there anymore, but thank you. How advanced is this project in your opinion? Which project? The one that we're doing right now? Is this Twitch stream projects directory you have available online? So, it, uh, yes, it is. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is a conda, or this is a GitHub repo which I have here and it's completely public. So you can go back in time and see all the stuff that we created. I didn't push it. I haven't pushed it as <coughs> frequently as I should have. So it might be a little bit out of date, but I'll go ahead and put that here for you guys. There you go. There you go. Okay. So, We're going to have a data EDA and this is just understanding the data that we just downloaded. So if I go into our, what is it? 63? No. 65 directory. And then I move this downloads. What was it called? Data dictionary. Move that into here. And then I also move this country partner 2020 here. Now we have both of those files in here. We can open up, um, let, let's just open up the data dictionary. And it's this PDF. All right. so. Looks like a very simple data set. We have location ID, the CEID assigned numerical country identifier. Okay, so every country is gonna have its unique ID. That makes sense. Partner ID. So this is who they're trading with. And product ID. So there might be a separate table so we'll have to download where we can look these up. Otherwise, we'll just have these numbers and we won't know what they mean. Year, so I downloaded one specific year and then in the background, I'm downloading all the years. So that's gonna take a while to download where we can just analyze one year now pretty easily. Export value. All right, so this is the US dollar export value. Import value. Oh, so we can see trends of if things are going up and down. This is a really cool data set. How do we land on this? How did we 
land on this awesome data set. SITC ECI, Economic Complexity Index Computed Using the SITC Product Data. No idea what that means. Can anyone tell me what that means? We'll figure it out. Product Complexity Index. Three character ISO country code. Okay, so this will make it easier for us to understand what the location is. Same thing with the partner. So this is like probably what we'll use more than the location ID and then the SITC product code. Okay, so let's Let's call this international trade data analysis. And then we're gonna say uh, data source. And this is, this is the link. Let's also get a quick summary that we read here. Okay, so this is good. We can just put this like in quotes. Actually, I think if we tab it over here, then we'll have our little data description of what it is. Nah, let's do it like this so it looks a little nicer. All right, so categorizes approximately 700 goods, goods covers all these years, break down to one, two, or four digit detail levels. Okay. Now here's the thing that's gonna come up next is, what is this data set file? Hey Twitch, if you see this, say hi. I, I see a edgy. <coughs> wow, Euro is greater than USD? Where do you see that? Um, ah, Twitch, where are you? Okay, here you go. All right, what are you guys saying? Standard, the standard international trade classification abbreviated as STIC, let me pop this out. Someone's helping me out here and I'm just messing up the window. Where's Twitch chat? Here it is. All right, the standard international trade classification abbreviated as SITC is a product classification in the United Nations used for external trade statistics, export and import values in volumes of good. Okay, so it's exactly what we thought it was, but this is like the official name, the standard international trade classification and we're gonna figure out exactly how we use that. Okay, so how do we read this DTA data? The first thing I wanna do is just go over here. I'll just make a new tab in my, in my console. We're gonna go into this Harvard Dataverse, and then I'm gonna just head this country partner DTA file. Okay, so it's it's not Unicode text. We can't just read it directly. Do you, does anyone know what a DTA file? What is a DTA file? DTA data is a file used by IWIS Chain Engineering Automata Trade. Uh? No, that's not right. Okay, so it's it's Stata. Open Stata data in Python. Okay, so yeah, so Pandas has this read Stata, which will help us to read this. All right, I I assumed that Pandas would have us covered and I was not let down. All right, so let's do our standard imports that we usually do. 
Let's import pandas as pd numpy matplotlib. And let's start from there. Oh, let's also do this. So it auto formats our code. Okay, now we're gonna read in Stata. And we're gonna read this country partner data. And we're just gonna call it DF for data frame. Might take a little while to read because it is it's not a tiny file. It is, oh, come on. It is 242 megabytes, so it is kind of small. Okay, here we go. All right, so read in. Let's see the shape of the data. So it's got a lot of rows and not that many columns. If we do a head on it, we could see the first five rows and we're able to see location codes, partner code. So my first question I'm thinking in my head is, do they provide us, oh wait, the Dataverse files all downloaded. Wow, so we have all those. Let's take care of that first so before I forget. So let's move from my downloads folder, this Dataverse, files, zip file into this current directory. And then we're gonna unzip it. So this might take a while to inflate all these. Oh no, it's actually going pretty fast. So every single year has its own file and country partner two digit year DTA. What is this? This is 1.7 gigs. Is that everything? I guess we'll find that out pretty soon. There's also, I'm assuming some data file that's gonna tell us more information about the country code or do we just have to go off of this location code? One thing we can do is we can go to the location code and we could do a value counts on this. This will tell us the top location uh, for that year. And guess what it is? Let's do a, a head of 10, so the top 10. And let's plot this as a bar plot and make it a little wider than it is tall. Um, we also want to, let's, after we do this head, let's sort values. Ascending is false. No, we want ascending is true. And that's a little too wide. And let's add a title. So this is in the year 2020, the top 10 trade trading companies. China's number one, then US. DEU, is that Dutch? That's Germany. Uh, Italy, France, Germany, no wait, Great Britain, <laughs> NLD, man, I'm really being challenged here. NLD, country, Netherlands, IND is India. How is India that low? All right, so my question here is, if you're the top location, the question is, do they always have, is it different to be the location and to be the partner? I'm guessing it, it does. So if you think of this as some like a graph relationship between countries, which we could probably make some sort of a, a network representation of this, but is this a directed graph 
like it's showing an arrow from the location to the partner and that's how much was traded. Otherwise, we can test this hypothesis that it is directed by looking at the partner code value counts. So if the partner code value counts does not look like this, which actually does, it does look like it. So let's look at partner. All right, all right. So this means, what I think this means is that there are for each for each uh, trade, there are going to be two rows. One where the trading company is um, the partner and one where they're the main location. Let's test that out. This is all going to be year... of 2020, because that's the only one we're downloaded here. But if we have, okay, so if we look at this product ID, let's look at, I wish I knew what these products were. It's not really interesting unless we know what these products are. And one way we could find that out is maybe by all these, all this data that we've unzipped. So let me go here back into here, make a directory called data, and then move all these country partner site products star into a data. Xcode resubscribed. Xcode, thank you. How have you been? How have you been, Xcode? Let's go ahead and spin the wheel for you. I don't even know if the wheel still works after all these weeks and months of being away, but anytime I get a subscription, on Twitch, I spin this stupid little wheel. <coughs> Xcode, where are you? Where's the chat? Can you use code interpreter, see how well it works? What do you mean code interpreter? Sign to the mic. <sighs> That's for you, Xcode. Thanks for subscribing. Living the dream. I like that. What are we trying to model? We're just, we're not trying to model anything. We're trying to understand this new data set. Oh, this got stuck because it's asking if it could re should replace that file. Yeah, so now we've actually started. All right, so we've, now we have everything here. And we're gonna move it, the re remaining amount into that data folder. Let's make this a little smaller and exit out of this top. Okay, so we have all these SATA files. This first one's large, it's 1.7 gigs. So I'm not sure if this, is this, this is the two digit year. This is a four digit year. So maybe we can look at that and see what that is about. But then what are these? Are these the product section year? Let's see if that gives us the product info. Let's see if that gives us the product in. So, so, so we're going to go into our data folder now, and then we're going to do country. Product section year. We're going to call this product. Might as well. Sounds good, like a good name. Ah, 
Ah. Okay, so we have location code. I don't understand what this really is. So let's go to product year. So for every year, actually, it looks like for recent years, there's the same number of rows. And then it becomes less as we go back in time, like 1963. So let's look at, so that means that there's one row for each thing and it repeats. And it might be a combination of location code and the SITC product code. No, maybe not. We might be able to save some time just reading this dictionary. All right, so maybe one thing to understand first too is how many products do we have? How many unique product IDs? Do we have in one year of data? So we want to see the number of unique. We have 767 products. This said categories, categorizes approximately 700 goods. All right, so it's actually, at least for this year, 767. And what's the number of unique location, isn't it called location ID? 235 locations. That matches what they said. Um, they don't list the number of locations, but we know here it's, for this year, it's about 200. Now here's the question. What's this times this? 235 times 767. So if every country traded one product, oh, but then you could trade it with every other country. So I guess it would be 234, but that should equal about this much. And look how many rows our data has. Look at this people, this is magic. Are you not entertained? Ramallah, can you show us the product ID summary? What do you mean? If you could show the other before you did, I could help you. What does that mean? Try Vanilla JS. Welcome. All right. So what what do we do here? We said that, and it, this isn't correct because this should be fours, right? All right. So we have two hundred thirty-five countries, which could trade with two hundred thirty-four other countries. And there are 767 products they could trade. So for a given year, we have, what is this? 42 million possible combinations that could be traded. And there's about 40 million, no wait, this, is this? No, so that's one tenth of it. <laughs> uh -huh, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Let's do this. So it just so happens that we have about one tenth of the amount of possible trades going on in this given year. So if we go here and we go to this data frame and we go to product ID and do a value counts on this, the most traded product is, drum roll please, 1408. What does that mean? I don't know. What's this called again? There's no way it's this thing. So what we wanna do here is 
So we're let's try to find out what this 1408 actually stands for. What does it stand for? Is it standing up for anything? So if we look up this product ID in this country SITC product section year, you know, this product ID. How in the world is it because of the data type? It's an integer. So in here, the product IDs are different because these are just numbers between zero and 10. So not quite sure what this is. Maybe if we go to the data dictionary, it will tell us. Nope, doesn't tell us. Here's some analysis other people have done with this data. All right, this looks like it was made in Tableau. All right, so here we can collect, uh, select the country, but where are the products? Okay, so here we go, chemicals. So there's some sort of hierarchy here, minerals, chemicals, vehicles, trains, planes, and automobiles. <coughs> All right, so what is this telling us? That China exports the most amount of trains. This is the gross export. Oh, so we're going to be able to get these values. And then we can see their share, which is the percentage of all exports of that. Oh, I really want to figure out how to figure out what these SITC values mean. Anyone in chat, can I help me out? Uh, Trade Atlas. Hi, man. I'm here again. A lot of love from you from India. Thank you, Bilal. Thanks for hanging out. It's seven versus eight digits. Hey man's got a new hairdo and nicer camera from the looks of it. Oh, thank you. I think it's the haircut that's making the camera look nicer. This site uses cookies. Okay. Type of product code. So 1402, no results. Product name. Ooh. Product details, 1402. I don't think this is actually telling me what it is. Don't know what this website even is. I don't know why I clicked on it. So we want to do SITC product code look up okay so here we go but why isn't this why isn't this in our data set somewhere i guess they're keeping that oh is that what this four digit year is that what someone was telling me in chat man an idiot all right so let's look at these read stata data. So let's look at the two digit. I'm going to call this product two dig. I'm not sure what that even means. Why is it one two digit and one, one's four? Let's make this four. All 
All right, the four one is taking a lot longer than the two to read. Oh, because the four digit one's like a lot larger, 1.2 gigs. This still gives us the location ID, product ID, import value. All right, so this gives us a product code. And they're just numbers, but then there are also things like ITC financial travel unspecified. That's weird. Let's look at the four digit. This is a lot more info. Don't know if it's helpful, but there's a lot more info. Now we got a four digit product code. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to import from this, right? Okay, so they're one, two, three, four, and five digit codes. I see how the, I think I'm starting to understand how this works. So if it's a one digit code, it's like a hierarchy, right? Food and live animals is zero. So if that's true, then we should be able to go to this data set for 2020 and we can query where the pro, oh, well, that's product ID, not SDIC product code. But let's do this equals zero. And there's nothing. So this is probably the, the four digit. Zero, zero would give us live animals other than fish. <laughs> live animals other than fish. All right, so this is a string type of field. Even though these are numeric values, you'll see that the leading zero stays there. So if we have like, it's actually a string that we're gonna look up. We don't have anything that's zero, zero. So it's probably gonna have to go down this to the five digit. Pure breed bovine breeding animals. Nope. All right, so we got all the way down to the four digit codes. And when we read this in, was it called four dig? Four dig? Yes, that's exactly why this says four digit. Look, we're learning. We're learning here. We're learning live learning. So, does this make sense to people? You have these census.gov codes, the SITC codes. Single digits just gonna tell you what category, what high up category it's in. And the more digits you get, the more detailed it is. It goes to five digit, but the data set we have is down to the four digit detail. So what was the thing that we saw was the most traded thing of 2020? I think we were looking at a different type of code, but we can look it up for the SITC. The most traded item, material thing. Take a guess, chat. What do you think it was of 2020? MD, MMD is going to bed. HS code can be withdrawn from custom site, but almost in each country, HS is not identical, but is general enough to have four digits from HS, which indicate main group. Got it, got it. H-H-T-W-O just subscribed. Did I get hair gel? A little bit, a little bit. Why is everyone commenting about my hair today? Um, thank you for subscribing, H-H-T. Let's spin the wheel for you. Picker wheel, what's it gonna be? While this is spinning, you all tell me what's the most traded thing of 2020? Take a guess and then we'll look it up. Take a guess. 
Ooh. F oh, just on the edge of typing pizza. All right, five push-ups. There we go. Two birds, one stone. Get a workout in and stream. Did anyone guess? Plastics. Toilet paper says trinking. Plastic of some sort. Okay, so everyone's saying plastics. Let's go ahead and see what this number is. Articles of plastics, NES. You are right. Everyone who said plastics, you are right. Toilet paper is not right. Xcode's hand sanitizer. That's a good guess. It, oh, yeah, it was 2020. I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah, so we can see how trade changed in 2020. That'll be interesting. All right, so plastics is the most traded thing. Let's see. Of the plastics... All right, so this needs to be a string value. Is that why it's not? Yeah, so it won't won't query well unless I unless I do that. All right, so China is the top. Well, okay, so this is the this is just a count of how many other countries that the location code traded with. So this isn't exactly what we're looking for. What we're trying to look for is, what we're trying to do here is group by the location code. And then we wanna take something from here. Export value and import value. So let's do export value and a sum. Okay. And then sort values. Ascending equals false. All right, so these are big enough numbers. These are big enough numbers True again. Okay. That it does help to see it plotted out. All right. So we got What do we have here? China, number one in trading in the amount of value that they exported of plastics in 2020. Germany second, then USA. Now, what if we want to, it's out of title, so we don't uh, forget this. Total export value of plastics. 2020 need another quote right now let's do the and this is a uh, e to the 10 so what is that let's look it up all right so that is billion 10 billion Billion, no, four billion, four billion dollars of trade. Let's see if Chat GPT knows this. Oh, it's going to give me a hard time.
Let's ask ChatGBT how much plastics did did China export in 2020 in USD. Let's see if it gets around 4 billion. Of course, it's got to preface it with blah, blah, blah. Just give me a number. <laughs> give me a number. Okay, so it's not going to tell me. Let's see if Google... All right, so this says 85 billion. Why we only have 4 billion here? Somebody's wrong. Maybe it's because articles of plastics might be. Yeah, there's other types of plastics. So 893. Okay, so 893 is going to be more details or, or a higher level of plastic. So actually, this is a good way. To, this is a way to do it. So if we go to this um, partner code, no, this product code. If we remember this type, the data type of this is a string. This is not a number. So if we do .str, we can do some Python uh, magic with strings. We can do stuff like starts with, and we could see all of them that start with 893. And then we can just subset to that data. All right, so now we have all the SITC product codes that start with 893. We have 8939, 8935. You get the idea. But if we go back here, no, not there. 893, that's everything that's articles, NES of plastics. What does NES stand for? Nintendo Entertainment System? All of these plastics are for Nintendo Entertainment Systems? No, but let's look at some of these other 893. 8932 is builders wear plastics. Okay, so let's see if we get 40 blah, 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 billion dollars if we filter this way. Let's, let's, instead of filtering like this where it's that specific value, now we're at less, are we at less? We're at more. It's at it's at six billion, so almost there, almost at eighty three. Or eighty five. I'm I'm sure I'm missing exactly what they're incorporating as plastics like artificial flowers. So this starts with 899, that's plastic. But at least under this one specific subset we have here of plastics, we have 4 billion. Like we, I'm sure we could study for a year to understand all of these different codes. I'm sure there's some people out there who know these codes in and out. Tubes, pipes, and hoses of plastics. That's five, eight, one, six. So all these, uh, we like, we weren't including everything in this. Okay, so anything st starts with five, seven is plastics. Got to go up even further. All right, that's not even a billion.
Oh, you know what? This is going one e eleven. So that that is seventeen billion. Uh, we're getting the idea. All right, what else can we look at this? What what else interesting things can we? Good evening, Rob. Kai, welcome. Maybe add or an or. What do you mean add an or? Yeah, we could we could try to get everything. China is a bigger contributor for plastic waste, but there are several grades of it: soft like films. Hard like cups. Others I made on Monday Tableau change with some visualization. Nice. I also think that um, don't a lot of countries like the U.S. send our plastics to China and then we say that they're disposing of it, but really we just gave it to them to dispose. So a little unfair. Okay, export value and import value. All right, one thing I want to clarify here too. Let's look up a specific product code. I wish there's SCIC product code CSV. Four digit SIC. Why is it in this weird thing? Why can't I just get a CSV? This one has descriptions. SITC. Okay, so that's different. What are we looking at here? SITC, bro. Can I do this? Read HTML of this site. No, it's not going to work. HTML5 lib not installed. Conda activate Kaggle 2023. Let's pip install this. Let's see if we could do it this way. Update pip, maybe later. HTML5 live not found, come on. We all know it's there. Oh, that's because I'm in the wrong that's because I'm in the wrong con environment. All right, starting from the top. This is going to restart our session. From scratch. No such file or directory. That's because we moved this file. This is good because it'll keep us honest. It's in the data directory now. Okay, so we've read that in. Don't need to do all this stuff again. We can go down, try to read this. SSL error, probably because, yeah, we need to have like a header that we provide it. Instead of that, let's just go here. Boom. There's got to be a CSV somewhere. Let's just look on GitHub. SITC product codes. No one cares about this enough to put a CSV out there. Dataweb.gov even? So 
Standard International Trade Classification. Revision 4. What type of file is this going to be? PDF. Nope. Nope. Not going to do it. We can tweet this. Of course, it's going to give us a link to tweet from that website. Ooh, I see an Excel file. Revision for level four. Is level four going to be... Is level four going to be the four-digit ones? What is this file called that we downloaded? Of course it has spaces in the name. There's nothing that peeves me more than files with spaces in the name. Is it just me? Is that just me? I think it's just me. Hey Rob, just joined. What are you up to? We're looking at the Harvard trade data, Dalton. So this, um, the Harvard Atlas has this Harvard economic complexity data set. We're trying to look at what countries trade what to each other. But it's, it's hard for us just to get these um, yeah of course this isn't gonna like it just to get the the codes <coughs> transferred into names that we can understand so let's move this to SITC r4 l4 All right now it's a better name Module not found. Got to install Open Pi Excel. Having to use quotes in a file path name in the terminal sucks. Yeah, exactly. Using Mac, you're using Mac of desktop? I'm using, uh, this is Ubuntu. All right, so we now have codes and of course it's all crappy. Um, we want to drop that first one. First, we want to get these values because this should be our codes that columns. Right? This will this will make the first row the column head names. And then we need to drop this first row and reset the index. Right? This is gonna give us nice and clean codes. Um, if I go to code, they're an object, so they're not uh, integers, that's good. And now if I do Let's just go crazy. Let's go crazy and take this SITC product code and let's map our codes, which will set our index to code. And what's this codes of oh, the text? Let's go ahead and map this. Now we have this long explanation for what the code is. We're gonna call it product type. So now we have actually something we can read. So 
So we could do something like this. We can go now to the product type. Now I see we have some missing values. Why would that be? So apparently like code 282860 is missing in this data set. Why? I don't know. If I look it up here, will it show up? It doesn't show up here. So maybe that's the anomaly. Let's look up. Let's see this product type is an A. So we'll see how many it are null, are missing, are not a number. And then we can run a mean on this. This will tell us, okay, so 23% of our product codes did not match to a product type. That's a, that's a good chunk. Probably worth looking into. We could also do the three digit product code, but I'm getting kind of tired of this. So we're just gonna go with this. Knowing that 23% of them aren't gonna be in this when we do our group by. But let's go to export value and sum. And then we can sort values. Head. Wait, typewriters other than printers of subgroups? Okay, so this is the, the least costly export are typewriters other than printers. Let's do All right, so electronic integrated circuits, those are the most expensive exports. And let's divide this by millions. Let's divide it by billions. So $766 billion in exports of electronic integrated circuits. Then next is petroleum oils. This makes sense. Special transactions and commodities not class classified. So this is kind of like a catch-all. Gold. Gold? Is that, I guess it's just valuable. All right. So... We could also get this product code, SITC product. And of course this is subject This is subject to really how the people who make these numbers decided to group everything together. But <laughs> of all these groups, electronic integrated circuits is the highest with this export value. And we can see that this is the code. So let's then query where our SITC product code is equal to this. That's right, this is a string, so we need to put this in quotes. It's not a number. Then let's do this. Let's group by our location code. So that's the exporter, I believe, and then the partner code. So this is the pairs between the exporter or the importer, we could see who sends the most products for the most money, at least in 2020, who sent the most. And then we'll do export value sum. Um, and then we can actually unstack this. All right, so we have a lot of null values. Um, maybe unstacking that was not a good idea. Maybe we can unstack in a second. 
So let's do a re um, can I query on this? Okay, so I can't. So now we have every combination. So for like ZWE with Turkey was $0 in this um, product of electronic circuits. But if we reset this index and we query where the export value is greater than, actually, let's just do this. All right, so most of the time there's zero. Even when it's greater than zero, ugh. let's say more than a million dollars. All right, now we're seeing some shape in it, but it's like there's something way over here. So what we wanna do is, what is this really high dollar relationship? I have a guess of what I think it might be. Wait, why is sort that okay? Because we got to do sort values on this. All right, Taiwan and China, Korea and China, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Hong Kong. These are all the companies with big amounts of trade between each other. This is where all the money is. Rob, try to examine full HS code that you'll see what it's all about. Have a go, nice stream. Thanks. What, what do you mean full HS code? Can you explain a little bit more? Full HS code. Taiwan has the largest semiconductor factory, so it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so when there was all the shortages in electronic circuits, I know the US had a little bit less import. So here's a question, can we see that? Can we see that in the data? Can we do this? So this is where we're kind of asking a question that we we'll want to want to try to solve. Can we load in data for multiple years? So let's do like 2010 to 2022. For each of these years, For each of these years, we're gonna read in the SATA file in our data. And let's take an example one. We're gonna read it in for that given year. And it's gonna look like this, all right? So this will read in, it should read in 2010. Now we have all the data for 2010 year. Now we want to query where partner code equals USA and this product SITC product code equals that. This should give us all the electronics imports for the USA for that given year. So we're gonna have this run over all these years and we'll append this each time. 
I probably should have put some sort of counter on that. Hello, Net Skeleto. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Hope you're enjoying this. We're looking at some trade values between nations. Taiwan, uh, yeah. Taiwan, US, China, Singapore, Korea. This is where all the money goes. Nescaletto, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Hey, by the way, how many how many followers are we at? Probably not going to hit the 5000 today. Maybe soon. I'm spinning this wheel for you. Thank you so much for subscribing. Did we hit 5k? Oh, and it landed on Everyone's favorite, scream Kevin as loud as I can. I'll do it away from the microphone. Kevin! That was pretty loud. That's for you. Thanks for subscribing. Let's look here. Um, we're still a good bit away from the 5K. 4,954 followers on Twitch. But we are we are getting close every day. Every day in every single way. All right, this is done. Now we have a list of data frames which we can just concatenate. We'll call this US Electronics. We'll reset the index. And let's make sure, okay, so this only goes through 2021. But that year should be an integer. So let's group by year. Let's do the Now we, we queried where the partner code was the USA. And then we want to do the import value. So that's how much the US is paying, I believe. I think this is right. I wouldn't bet all my money on this being correct. But this is the amount of US dollars paid on imports by year. Does that look right? Let's make this a dot dash. And let's also make the line width a little bigger. And then we also have to make the marker size bigger. There we go. <laughs> I kind of went overboard on that. But US electronic imports. Let's also, let's, uh, let's be honest here and make this Let's make this Y limit within a range that makes sense. All right, so yeah, it looks a little bit exaggerated when we show it the Y axis starting at 3 billion, but that was sort of the baseline. And then you can see it actually went up. It went up. Um, I was expecting to maybe see a dip in 2020 when there was the shortage, but I don't see it. What are you LOLing about? Oh, my Kev me yelling Kevin, probably. Now, what I want the last thing I want to do here is 
Let's group by year and the location code. So this is the exporting location. Oh, let's also do this as export. Okay, so the export amount in in dollars. Oh, it's actually kind of close to the import value. But you see that there's a lot more money being spent on importing and exporting in the last year. What I want to see is the import value by country that it was import from. So Maybe we just keep we just subset this to the top importers. Wow, so the Top importer is Mexico and then China. Malaysia. Really? I didn't know that Malaysia had that much exports. Okay, so import value, Mexico first, then China, Malaysia, Korea, Taiwan. And let's do the head of 10. And then we'll take the index of this um, and make this to a list. Top importing countries all right we're going to query only these top importing countries we're going to do a value count and then we're going to unstack no wait that didn't work not a value counts, we're gonna do a sum. And then we're gonna unstack that. Silly me. All right, these values are kind of hard to read like this. Um, so we can do it one of two ways. We can add a background gradient. Like this. This is kind of interesting, look at this. By years, we could see, and we could do some styling so we don't see all these, like to the, so many digits. But we could see over the different years, maybe we should do a transform this, transpose this. Wait, so. Wow, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. Um, look at what's ha what was happening. Um, the amount of money spent, and I think this is the amount of money that U.S. is spending importing electronic goods from other countries. Look at the values from China. Starting in 2019, they really went up. Maybe that's because the cost of things started to increase while the cost from 
Mexico really went down. And same thing with Canada. Like we're spending billions there and then it dropped it to a, by an order of magnitude? No, by, yeah, it looks like it, it dropped at least in half in 10 years. Will this look better as a line plot? All right, so this is the amount of money spent on importing electronics by countries to the US, by other countries to the US, only showing the top 10. Wait, so this is Mexico, the trade with Mexico actually went up. Okay, so this value is going up, but the reason why it's getting lighter is because uh, relative to that field, so this should be background gradient should be axis is one. Yeah, because we're just spending more on it every year. But this looks at it compared to that only that country year over year. All right, so this makes a little more sense. Everything's really going up. We're, it's just the cost of electronics are going up. Man, there's so much you could do there. It's tens of billions. Yeah. Hello there, Hanny. Annie, welcome to the chat. <coughs> uh, I was hoping this would be our 5,000 follower on Twitch stream, but that's got to come up, come in soon. All right. Was this fun? Was this interesting? I don't know. I had fun getting back into it. Um, I want to thank everyone for hanging out tonight who was hanging out. Let me know in the chat. Just put a big old exclamation point or something if you were watching uh trent thanks for watching how are you doing so thirsty so we did a lot we um we were looking at economic data trade between countries and trying to get a grasp on it Nothing I actually came to the or plotted or, or thought I understood at, by the end of this would I rely on. But if someone else was to check it, you know, maybe um, maybe if we spent another week or so with this data, we'd have a better understand it. understanding of exactly what each value means. Um, and the other thing with this is like a lot of the numbers that you look at are kind of subject to what the people who created the data decided to bucket things. So electronics is its own bucket. So it shows up as being the most expensive, but if they decided to make that into a different type of bucket like more detailed, maybe it would be something else, but it's still interesting to see those trends year over year. Cause that should stay kind of consistent and you can see where all the money's going into and coming out of, um, a lot you could do with this. If this was like a senior project or something, you could spend spend a, a long time on it. All right, so people are asking, how can I find my, my Twitch channel? That's a great question. I probably should have that link somewhere, right? It's right here. I put the link right there. That's my Twitch channel. I'll show you it here. There right we are. How many fo followers does this guy have? How many followers does he have? Um, oh, wait, it says 5K, but it's rounding up. Oh, why are you rounding up, Twitch? Because I can see here. Thank you, guys. I can see you guys following, but we're still at 4956. But I thank you all for uh, watching there. If you're watching on, on YouTube, I thank you also. 
Oh, you can check me out on um, on YouTube, by the way. It's youtube.com slash at Rob Mullah. You can also follow me on Twitter or X or whatever the heck he calls it now. Um, I really dislike the X logo. It's just something about... Uh, I'm, I like the Twitter brand. I thought it was a good brand. But you can follow me there. There's a link. Um, you can also join our Discord by typing exclamation discord. And that's a place we just hang out and chat sometimes. And I think that's about it. Now, usually what I do, so we can just go ahead and raid someone who is, uh, who is coding. Oh, look at this, Cyforce one is coding. Um, doing JavaScript, but let's go ahead and give him a raid because it's been a while since I raided Cyforce one. So let me show that to those of you on Twitch. Raid Cyforce one. All right, that's going to happen in about. 10 seconds. So thanks everyone for hanging out tonight. That's the end of the stream. And I will see you maybe on Thursday, maybe on Sunday. We'll do something maybe different next time. All right. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, YouTube.